Praise the Lord. Praise ye, ye servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His name, now and forever. We praise and worship the Lord together by singing, You are the vine, and the seven nine two in mission praise. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your Almighty God, you so to truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together to collect for the 19th Sunday of the Pentecost. Let us pray. Just and merciful God, Help us to live the faith we have received, so that when Christ returns, we may be found worthy to be received into your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. proclaiming the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 18, beginning from verse 1. Glory, Glory to Christ our Savior. 
And Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, can't be justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And God will not bring, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And may I speak in the name of God, who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On Sunday, the 16th of October, a certain priest gave an unusually long sermon based on the parable of the persistent widow and the corrupt judge. The same gospel passage that we heard this morning. And later when he was shaking hands with his parishioners at the door, one man came up to him and said, Father, your sermon was simply wonderful. So invigorating, inspiring and refreshing. The priest developed this big smile across his face until the man continued, I felt like a new man when I woke up. <laughs> my friends, it is my hope that this morning that this priest will not be that long. But in the event of you drifting off into greener pastures, I pray that you also would emerge inspired and refreshed as a new being in Christ. Today's readings are mainly about prayer, perseverance in prayer, constancy in prayer, and trust in God as we pray. But they also speak to us about the trustworthiness and justice of a God that reaches out to the poor and the weak, enabling them to fight against injustice. You see, the parable of the poor widow and the corrupt judge comes after Jesus had a conversation with some Pharisees about when the kingdom of God would finally come. I think Jesus must probably sense the impatience in their words, impatience behind their questions. And so what he does is he answers them with this parable. Most of us here this morning can relate to that kind of impatience because we grow up in a world where we want instant answers 
and fast results. And I think maybe that is why we tend to give up on God so easily. Because we come to God, we approach Him with far less confidence than this determined widow that we read about. And many times, behind the words of our prayer lurks a subtle tendency to doubt God. Seed of doubt that is born in our suspicion that God is not really listening. That God does not really care, that we are all alone, and that God has left us to fend for ourselves. He's an absent landlord that is up there. We start to think that just because God doesn't answer us when and how we want, that he isn't really interested in us. Our secular postmodern culture encourages the suspicion. And that does not make it easier for us to live a life of contemplation and prayer. The rapid advance in science and technology have created an unlimited and, may I add, arrogant confidence in science in human and human ingenuity. What should have become a, an occasion to give thanks and, and praise to God for all the advances that we have made has become a means by which we reject Him. We start to believe in ourselves that we can save ourselves. We live in this world where we, that offers us quick answers and even faster responses to our whims and fancies. A world that promises us instant happiness by fulfilling all our dreams if we, if we just buy that or do that or get that. And therefore it's no wonder that our days are filled with self-help programs of things to do and places to be. Our secular humanist culture, the big faith and belief, as a sign of division, a sign of weakness, because it depends and involves us depending on God for things that they say we aren't supposed to need anymore. Things like forgiveness, things like grace, things like miracles, things like the sacraments, things like prayer and spiritual gifts. According to this worldview, Jesus is a nice, a pious man with some good ideas, but that is it. Therefore, things like, like prayer and meditation, things like spending time with God, becomes meaningless exercises with no value. None of us who are here this morning, at least those of you who are still awake, consciously agree with this world view. That is why we have gathered here at St. George, because we are a community of faith. We believe in God. We believe that God can make a difference in our lives and in our world. But my friends, because we live in this world, we have to be careful. We have to be careful that this distorted view of, of who we are of who Jesus is and of who God is, does not slowly creep into our hearts and minds with us, without us realizing it. Because this view has a devastating effect on, on our faith and on our life of prayer. We simply go through the motions. We display outward and external signs of faith while our inner life is without praise and power, we desire nothing, we expect nothing, we get nothing, and therefore we grow in nothing. There's a wonderful story that I read, which illustrates how, how we often confuse God's purposes and plans with our own desires. A rural newspaper 
had been running a series of articles on the value of church attendance on Sundays. One day the editor received a letter which read, print this if you dare. So the moment you hear that, you know there's trouble coming. And this gentleman wrote the following, he says, I am trying an, an experiment. I have a field of corn which I plowed on Sunday. I planted it on Sunday. I did all the cultivating of the fields on Sunday. I gathered the harvest on Sunday, and I hauled it to my barn on Sunday. I found that my harvest this October is just as great as any of my neighbors who went to church on Sunday. And then he asked the question, so where was God all this time? The editor printed this letter in the newspaper. But he added at the bottom of this letter, he added his own reply, and this is what he says. He says, your mistake lies in thinking that God always settles his accounts in October. <laughs> My friends, we often start out with the wrong expectation. We often start at thinking that our prayers will force God to act when and how we want him to act. We do not realize that God is never out of office. God is never on holiday. He on, always answers our prayers even when the answer is no. We, on our part, have to remain faithful. We have to be constant in prayer, constant in thanksgiving, constant in repentance, constant in praise, and constant in bringing to God every need that comes our way. Because constancy, constancy is at the heart of our faith. Constancy builds confidence. And that is the path to growing in our relationship with God. Our prayers do not change God's will. Instead, they bring our minds and our will in line with God's purposes. They change us. And so persistent prayer is our continued communion with God. A communion that, that makes us. A communion that reshapes us that changes our hearts and the way in which we look at ourselves, at God, and at the world. This communion brings us to God's original design for us, for our lives, and eventually for our world. And so such prayer does not change God. Instead, it makes us different. It makes us look at the world and at other people with different eyes. It makes us ready to accept God's will, even if that is difficult. You see, my friend, God wants to give us so much. He wants to give us so many gifts to help us in this journey through life, our journey of faith, so that we can one day stand in front of him pure and blameless. But God won't give them to us until we are ready to receive them. And sometimes getting ready to receive the gifts of God means becoming more and more aware of our need for God in our lives. Once we start to acknowledge that, then our prayers will become more real. Because then we speak to God, not from a position of what we want, but knowing that he knows what we need even before we ask. And so my friends, this week I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to pray more. 
I want to challenge you to thank God more for the many things that He gives you. I want to challenge you to ask God for what you need and to promise God that you will follow Him no matter where He asks and wants you to go. Amen. Let us pray. How could I ever imagine that I would cope without praying? How could I keep going unless I knew that I could return my heart to you and soak my darkness in your light? Pour your mercy into my madness and your spirit into my will and make me know in my heart as well as my head that only in you am I found forgiven and free. Father, we ask you to show us that at all times we ought to pray and not lose heart, to persevere even when it seems you are not answering us. Help us to understand that when the Apostle Paul instructed us to pray without ceasing, he meant we should pray regularly throughout the day. We need to bring our specific requests or burdens or joyous praise to you in prayer. Help us to realize that we can't do it without you, but not to be disheartened if it takes time to receive answers, that you care for us and that your delays are for our own good, even if the reasons are hidden from us, that our trials may be to develop faith and humility. We know that you care for us and are more than ready to grant our requests when we are ready according to your timetable, not ours. Help us to understand and to have faith. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So my friends, wherever you are in your journey of faith, whatever your circumstances, whatever the challenges that you face, just pray. And he will give you a peace which passes all understanding. And so my friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Peace. 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 Peace.